Angled toward Hollowell. And he missed the pylon. Kicked it out of bounds. And with that, the Colorado offense led by sophomore starting quarterback from here in Boulder, Craig Oaks, going to work. Only the third true freshman ever to start at quarterback for them last year. From the second quarter of game four on, it was his job. He set freshman records for passing and total yards, erasing the likes of Coy Detmer from their book. Chris Brown starting a tailback junior college transfer. They have some injuries at that spot. Brown at fullback with Minardi, McCoy, and Graham. The receiving board. Graham, they feel, the best tight end of the Big 12 Conference. So the bus from the 35, and the first half of the year is to get the Brown for no gain. Riding him down is Maurice Rodriguez, the weak side linebacker for the Bulldogs. Offensive line for Colorado. They feel one of their best in some time. Bates and Hage on the split side with Lucia the center. And on the tight side, best blockers of this group, Gerard and Rogers. Defensive front for Fresno State. Alan Harper, by far the best of this group. Alan Harper has a motor. Gary Barnett says he's the most active defensive lineman he's seen in years. Two times, first team all wet. Should get some All America consideration this year. On second down to the air, and Graham the tight end for a short game up near the 40 yard line. He had 33 catches a year ago. The linebacker group for the Bulldogs. They replaced three starters. Not much experience here. Rodriguez, Daly, and Johnson. Yeah, Johnson missed all last year with a shoulder. Year before, led the team with six sacks. Block a punt here in 98, looking to come back with a strong 2001. And they feel the best secondary maybe they have ever had at Fresno State. Led by Vernon Fox, first team all-conference last year, despite no interception. That tells you how well he supports against the run. Back to the air. First down grab for Cedric Cormier, senior from Houston, good for 14 yards for Colorado. Well, this is going to be the theme of Colorado all night. Move the change. It's not a big play offense. You're going to see him just get enough to move the change. Here it's a third and mid-range play. Goes five yards, pack, pass the sticks. A lot of cushion on the defense. This is what Coach Barnett wants to do, control the ball, help their defense a little bit, which is the weak point of the Colorado team. Cormier really just now getting back to full speed after an ACL tear as a freshman. Bulldog 46. And that one incomplete. Intended for second tight end, Bill Williams. And Bill, 3 and 8 and Colorado. That just doesn't compute. You never expect that. Certainly, Gary Barnett never expected it last year. What Bill McCartney, Gary Barnett, and other outstanding coaches built here is a matter of intense pride now. This is a traditional power in the minds of the people here. So, 3 and 8 will not get it. They know Nebraska and Kansas State are favored ahead of them in the Big 12 North, but they think this may be a year they can sneak through. And trying to sneak through the middle. On his second carry is Chris Brown, who was recruited by Barnett at Northwestern, left there, thought about leaving football behind altogether. His father said, you can do it, but find another way to get a full scholarship. And, and he, suddenly he decided he liked football again. Yeah, absolutely. He loves a running back at Northwestern. They wanted to make him a wide receiver. Remember, guys, last year at this time, we were talking about Marcus Houston, the freshman who's out tonight with an injury, and, and Brown is the one that's to get the big load tonight. Burke Scott Community College, then on to Colorado, and he starts tonight. Third and four, helps over the middle, intended for Graham, and it's tipped away. Graham ranging open over the middle, and it's Harper who reaches up for a piece. In the pit, you don't think of pass defense. Harper is the nose guard, number 98. This is a zone blitz. You bring the secondary player. Harper jumps and actually tipped that ball, and he is so excited, Michael. You think he's an athlete? Never it's touched an the athlete, ball. He's never touched the ball in your career. But you see him in coverage. They're the athletes of the team, this kid Harper. We're going to punt, and Mark Mariscal, placement kicker last year, punting this year, at least tonight. We'll try to hang this one inside the 10. Mark Berrien watches it sail into the end zone. So the net only 20 yards on the punt. So we'll see Fresno State and senior quarterback David Carr. Scouts already have him the top three to five senior quarterbacks in the country this year. He's the most accurate quarterback in school history, just under 61%. 
Last year, about twice as many touchdowns as interceptions. Pat Hill's first recruit. And joining him, Josh Levi, who has beaten out Paris Gaines for the start. Greco, the H-back. Davis for the injured Charles Smith, senior wideout out about a month with a sprained knee. Jeremy, Darian, and Johnson rounding out the receiving third. They send Davis in motion, and Carr rolling in the first offering of the season is incomplete, intended for David Shabaglian, who started at an extra wide out. The offensive front for Fresno State, they've never had a bigger group. And Rodney Michael, a 300-pounder at guard, you'll see him at left tackle as well. He is by far the best athlete in this group. B2 two off, banged up, made play some at guard. Defensive front for Colorado, Brayton, Bandon, McChesney, and Harris. And on second and ten. Again, Carr looking right side through the air. And with a flag down, he overthrows Varian, who was in coverage by Donald Strickland. Donald Strickland is the guy they're counting on to be their main man in coverage. He's going to get called for defensive holding or interference here. Little piece of jersey there. They're not going to let you get away with that, Donald. Got to keep down the inside there. Once that hand gets extended out there, the rest will see that and call it on you every time. Well, you got to keep the receiver's body outside when you are in man coverage. And they're counting on Strickland to be the guy that can clamp a receiver and shut him down. And as you talked about, Bill, they're counting on Sykes to look like he did as a sophomore, not as a junior. Precisely. Strickland with Lewis Robinson. Jackson, this secondary shredded last year. 104th in the country, pass yards allowed. Pass to improve. Oh, rolling. And that's it off complete. Johnson to tie it in with a game of about seven yards. What we're seeing is some early completion opportunities for Carr just to get his confidence going early in the year. But very soon, because of the way Colorado secondary was wasted last year. This ball is going to go deeper and deeper. This is a misdirection, a naked bootleg, meaning there's no blocker. Nice job. Just a little dump it off out there, Johnson. And an eight-yard gain. Movement first on the defensive line, and then Logan Mankins, the freshman left tackle. Yeah, remember, if the D-line is in the neutral zone and then the offensive lineman moves, it'll be on the defense. We'll see what happens. Dead ball. Full start on the offense. You'll be so happy Five to yard know. They got the, the O-lineman for it because the D-lineman got back in time. Again, because, Bill, they're athletes. They have every advantage to take care of. What do you mean every advantage? They don't know when the snap is like your guys do over there in the offense. Of an obvious intellectual deficiency. No, no, not. Hey, hey, guys, it's a, it's a long you. season. Oh, Pace yourselves. <laughs> Second down, and now eight. And it's Levi, their leading rusher last year, but only 397 yards was enough to lead Fresno State in rushing. Very deficient and, and ground I, attack. And I'll tell you, Pat Hill, the head coach, yeah, now, that old old lineman there, an old line coach, loves to be able to grind it out. Now, he's got a great passer in Carr, but he'd love to be able to play a little smash mouth as well with Levi and that offensive line, Dave, which you mentioned is the biggest it's ever been. 6'4", averaging about 306, 310 pounds, depending on who's in there. So a third and three, Barry in left and Davis right. Brett and Blitz back off. Pass it complete for Josh Levi. And even with the holding penalty, the Buffalo defense manages to turn back the first David Carr drive of the night. Yeah, I think it'd be disturbing looking at Shabaglin and Levi there, the way they did not adjust to the football. Neither one of them looked like they expected to catch the ball. It didn't look good as receivers. Certainly gets there in a hurry, too, when yeah, Carr throws yeah, it. He, did, he, 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 he sort of feathered it in there nicely. So Jason Simpson on the punt for Fresno State. Roman Hollowell is deep for the Buffaloes. Runners love kicking at altitude. 5,300 feet. Hollowell has had it in this half. Across the 35 for the Denver senior. 18 on the return of a 45-yard Simpson kick. 
Fred Oaks and the Buffaloes will have it for the second time in the first quarter when we come back to Boulder. ESPN 2's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. And by the new Dockers Mobile Pant. And not too far from the Buffalo statue or the Rocky Mountains. Seem to bump right up against Folsom Field. Back inside, Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, Mike Gould, and Jimmy Dykes. Second possession for the Buffalo offense will start from their 36-yard line. Oaks with a give on the delay to Brown. And popped it up at the end of the run. They're not going to say he was down. They're going to say Fresno State recovers. At the Colorado 46. Chris Brown is a marvelous talent, a very impressive person. We've had a nice chance to visit with him yesterday, but he has not carried the football at this level of competition before. He did a great job in junior college a year ago. This is a different kind of athlete hitting him here. The ball comes away from his body, and that's how you lose it. It's jerked out. Might have a little bit of a questionable call here. He may be down, Michael. Well, see, he's got the ball. It's you. No, 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 it was it's out. out. It's, it's an out. Call, Good call. Buddy. Good call. Rodriguez is real active in the early going. He caused it. Justin Johnson recovered it. And the first break of the day, Fresno State tries to take advantage. Far through the air. Mark Davis is close to a first down. Davis, as a sophomore, played only two games last year before an abdominal injury ended his year. Went on to a medical red shirt. Charles Smith, the fifth leading pass catcher in school history, misses at least four games with a sprained right MCL suffered in practice last week. Bill, you think they're setting up for that long pass? You mentioned it before. We're seeing a lot of out routes. Carr has a strong arm to get it outside. I'm waiting for that wheel uh, ride. I think it's a good matter of time. This would be a good time, second and short. Davis missed just by inches. Audible. And from the 35, Levi off tackle. Keeps his balance inside the 30. And Fresno State first down from there. Let's send it down to Jimmy Dykes. Hey, Dave, I stood by David Carr when he was out of the game just a second ago. This guy's a stud at that quarterback spot. He's really a linebacker in a quarterback uniform. As a freshman, he was 6'2 and 200. He's now 6'3, 235. This kid can bench 390. He power cleans 300. He can squat 500 and run a 4'740. You ask any of those Fresno defenders who's the best quarterback you've ever played against, they all say David Carr. How important is that to practice against a guy that good, Coach Curry? Very. <laughs> very, very. They said when he was their scout team quarterback. And he hits Davis again. And again, good for nine yards to the 21. You know, there was a whack meeting a few months ago, and Ken Hatfield, the Rice head coach, sidled up next to Carr. Thought he was standing next to a linebacker, literally. He had to, Carr had to convince him, yeah, I'm the quarterback. No he came into the meetings, and we talked to him yesterday. He's got guns on him, like the linebackers. And even the defenders, we talked to Alvin Harper, he said, we, we wish he played linebacker for us. Well, what the what Alvin called him the real deal. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Three wideouts on second and three. They blitz him. He still gets it off, and it's still complete. And another Fresno State first down to Shabaglian at the 12. One of the things, and we're going to talk a lot about this guy because he puts the ball there, and, and I said it in the open. He'll throw from the pocket first, and he'll take the hit. He will stand in there. He'll make the throw, and he'll take the hit. He got drilled here at the end of the play again. It's coming from the backside. He's going to stay in there and make the throw. He gets hit hard, but it's right on the money. That's Strickland blitzing off the backside. They're going to pressure him. They're going to pressure Carr all day long. They think they can get to him and rattle him. Drifting out of the eye, Levi. And three wide receivers. Trying to throw a first down. And Carr juggles, falls on it for a long. Absolutely essential. And there's no excuse for a center quarterback exchange problem ever. The goal for the season is zero center quarterback exchange problem. I don't care how good the defensive lineman and big Justin Bannon's lined up there on the center, Mike Stovall, but he's got to get that ball up, and the quarterback has to keep his hands under. You assign blame to both of them. You don't want one of those in a season. Stovall, some center, but also both guards last 
Matthew, not a full-time center. Loss of two. On another roll. Juggle caught by Jeremy Johnson, and the tight end reaches the six-yard line. Third down. They need the two for a first, six for a touchdown. You know, we talked a lot about the wide receivers and their size, smaller guys, tall, thin guys. And one thing they kept saying is we love it. And the tight end is a 205-pounder in Johnson. But these guys love to go down the field, these these wide receivers and block. Again, this misdirection, we've seen it this time straight to the tight end. He wasn't blocking. Watch the block coming up at the end here from your right-hand side, right there. Bernard Gary, and he looks like a gazelle and blocks like a tank. So here's third and four from the six. Carl with Tom Johnson again, ridden down, short of the goal line, but it is first and goal inside the one. Corey Mussoni preventing a touchdown for Colorado. Well, you see the receivers are all going to go across the field and clear them out. You see this two receivers out. Watch, they're both going to go to the right, clear it out, and you see tight end dragging across the top. What a nice touch on that ball, Bill. Good soft throw by the quarterback there. There's a term that we like to use with great quarterbacks. They can deal the football. Deal it left, right, middle, look off the linebackers. This guy is playing beautiful. Johnson got him within a foot. First and goal, sneaking car. And no signal. Now there is third down Bulldogs. Crowd reacting to the lateness of the call. But enough of the serves to get him across and get Fresno State a touchdown. I think David probably gets He's getting mocked a little bit in the film session. We just talked about how big and strong he is if he can't get in a half a yard on a quarterback sneak, though. Well, there is a way to run a quarterback sneak, and this is the right way to run the sneak. You get your pads down, you get in behind those big butts, and you keep your feet moving. That's what you do. You don't jump up in the air or dive on the ground. You see all kind of machinations from quarterbacks who don't know how to run a sneak. Okay, That's what? how you score. Look at stuff. Okay. Hey, Sin, do that in the ass. I have no control. Hey, Sin, ask for who are. He is from Plumden, Bulgaria. Probably the best football player they've ever produced. <laughs> and drives home the extra point. You know what Gullick wanted to know? Is he from Denmark? Is that near Denmark? <laughs> Car throwing and finally car running to get Fresno State the early lead. Colorado's Chris Brown fumbles recovered by Fresno State. They drive 45 yards. David Carr, 5 of 5 for 39 yards out of that 45, and he carried it over the last yard. So, Brett Visitator again kicking it off for Fresno State. one went out of bounds. This one goes over the end line. The Buffaloes will start from their corner. Send it down to Jimmy Ducks. Hey, Dave, I think you can tell a lot about a team's mentality by how they react when things go poorly to start the game and how they react when things go well. When Fresno scored that first touchdown, there wasn't a lot of hooping and hollering, very businesslike on that sidelines, almost like that's what we expected when we came here. We came to win. I tell you what, their attitude right now reflects it awfully well on that sideline. Well, we'll see how Brown recovers from coughing it up and seeing that lead to the first score. They fake to him. And Oates going for Minardi for the first time. And the senior from Laguna Niguel, California, their leading returning receiver, 48 catches last year, sees it sail over his head. And we saw that in some of the film we watched, Bill, with Oaks, is the ball that's a little deeper, the 20 yards and up, and the long ball was a little off the mark. They said he worked on that a lot this offseason. They like getting him on the move, get him on the corner. And he's got to get some touch with that deeper ball. He's worked very hard at it. He's got more confidence this time. Two wide out to begin on the left side. Now Derek McCoy in motion. And Brown with the carry on second and ten, breaking one tackle, gain of six. He starts tonight because Portland Johnson, the veteran out of St. Louis, out with an ankle. Marcus Houston, the prize freshman recruit from Denver a year ago, out with uh, tonight. A groin problem, but last year the problems for Johnson, multiple. Houston had a uh, hip flexor tear, and then uh, Bobby Purify played well while he was healthy, but that wasn't the whole year. 
So you would think after a whole year to heal, they'd all be back, but they're not. McCoy with the catch of the Colorado first down as he beats Tyree Sands for 10 yards. Now, the impact of all those injuries at that key position for Colorado, we'll see as the night goes on. Derek McCoy is one of the better-looking wide receivers we've seen in years. Cuts his route off perfectly. Nice concentration on the low ball. Tucks it, puts it away. Another one of those gazelle-type receivers. Gets him in traffic and taking his licks. We've seen two third-down completions by Oaks for the defensive corners are playing off past the first-down sticks. They've got to move it up a little more in that third, four, and five. Four targets for Oak. Hollowell is the one who picks out for a gain of only about three. And fans reacting to the method of the hit, although Hollowell pops up immediately and Sands is still rolling around stunned. Well, you know what? When that one, you, you could see that one coming and you knew you had a feeling someone was going to get stung on that one. Boy, oh boy. It was a cover two, meaning he yep. was up. He had a hard responsibility in that flat, so anything that came his way, he's a, supposed to attack it just like that. The mistake he made was that he didn't keep his head up. Absolutely, and, and that's exactly what you hear what the fans are, are, are born about. He had his head down. This is not the way to tackle when, you, when you're taught to tackle. Well, it's also not the fans' place to fool a player because he's playing hard. And a hit like that, yeah. It still stings, but you're able to get up after it. Looks like he's going to be okay. Tyree is up, being helped off and replaced by Kendall Edwards. Edwards, I say, one of the best hitters on the defense. Sam's getting the worst of his collision with Roman Hollowell. Still not what Colorado wants. They're still in a second and seven situation. They want to get in that second three, four, five, or six. They haven't done that in a couple of, couple of last drives. Back in the eye after a play fake boat. The flag down has Hollowell again, driven out of bounds at the 40 by Bryce McGill. If it stands, a game of 20. Well, we're going to have a holding call on big Andre Girard, who's the lineman who leads best for the offensive unit for the Buffaloes. And the Buffalo might be your mascot, but you can't Buffalo the fella in the front of it. Now, he's there blocking on number 59. That's called a two-point takedown right over here in this part of the screen. And the umpire's going to see that every time, and Andre knows it. He didn't even need to do it. The ball yeah, he did. He didn't, and he had, the, he had the guy going down. Again, that arm got caught across the chest, and it was right in front of the referee. He was going for the berry block there, the pancake. Yeah, the you're pancake. Behind, it got cut across the chest. Yeah, I was <laughs> trying to help him out a little bit there, Bill. Second penalty, and it wipes out what was their biggest game. So they snap instead all the way back at their 29. The screen, they speak. They read it. Offered Casey's Oaks and knocked out. After a very short game by Devon Banks. Harper, according to Pat Hill, and their defensive coordinator, Dan Brown, better than anybody in the WAC, and according to the Colorado coaches, better than Casey Hampton and Sean Rogers, who they played for Texas last year, both first-round picks. Now, this is going to be a screen out to the right, up on the top of your screen, right to the... Harper getting after the quarterback, but the back never got a place to get open. The linemen never were able to get out in front of the running back. So third and 17. Buck need to get to the 46. They break a knock it free from Oak. Still rolling loose, and we may have the second Colorado turnover of the first quarter. Free safety, Bryce McGill, number five, comes clean, and that's on the quarterback. The quarterback's got to see the free safety. Absolutely. And either throw hot. That's one of the things that Coach Barnett believes Oak does best. This time, no cigar. This was not a blindside shot at all. I mean, it does come off to his, off to the quarterback's right a little bit, but he's got to be able to see that, Bill. Yeah, it's right as line of vision. One of the things that you check when you're that clean, where is the free safety? That is part of your read. And then if you're going to get hit, you tuck the ball, put it away. Not a good start for Craig Oates. So McGill causing the second Colorado turnover. A 
Yes, it's 21 of the Buffaloes, already up 7 to nothing. Uh, back to work. First carry of the night carry game. Senior from Vista, California. Off knee reconstruction a little over a year ago. Injured in the 99 Vegas Bowl. And Levi beating him out for the starting role tonight. As McGill accepts his congratulations for turning it back over to Gaines, the offense. Paris Gaines is aptly named. We saw him in the Las Vegas Bowl a couple of years ago, David, and he is a load. When he takes it up in there, he's going to make yards if he's got anything at all. 225 pounder out to mid season last year. Dan of two. Car on the roll for Durian. Inside the five and out of bounds at the two. And first and goal, Bulldogs from there, a gain of 12. Bill, as a coaching point now, put on your head coaching cap. You, you, we've seen Fresno complete these out routes. Does Colorado have to start coming up and trying to take them away? I mean, is it, it almost seems like they're hesitant to come up thinking they're waiting for Carr to go deep, just like we're waiting for Carr to go deep. But he keeps going short and out, and Colorado's playing off. Well, they're going to have to go to a, something like a cover two or a man coverage, and that's exactly what Fresno will do. That's when they will go deep. From the one, first and goal. With two tight ends and gains across for another Fresno State touchdown. Now, I think everybody here has figured this out, but these guys can play in Fresno. They've played well in the kicking game. They've played well on defense, and they've been brilliant on offense, and they have had to throw the ball deep, Mike, and the coverage has dictated these dumps and dinks, and Carr has executed along with his receivers. Just what we said Colorado needed to do, ball control. They haven't. Fresno State has had the ball control. Who's kicking again, Dave? Maybe a sin Esperuha. Where is he from? Denmark. Plav Div. Plav Div? Bulgaria. Okay. Good pilot. 14 nothing. Well, everything Fresno State hoped to get out of this game, a national forum that they are not accustomed to, they are getting right now. They are taking it in every way to the Colorado Buffaloes. They've cashed in two turnovers for a 14-0 lead. Awfully quiet at Folsom Field with Fresno State already up 14 to nothing. College football Thursday. Kicking off the season on ESPN is quarterback Jason Thomas and UNLV meet up with Arkansas. Their talented running back Cedric Cobb, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. This coming Thursday. This is Painter's third kick, and none have been returned. So again, Colorado will take over at their 20-yard line, and Everybody back the game catching is the last miscue by the Buffalo. Everything, guys, that they were trying to get over from last year, and everything they've heard nothing but over the last offseason, is uh, recurring. It's right back out there again as a problem. Well, they haven't been on deep ball. <laughs> Except for that. <laughs> And Colorado, with their offense, 90, what was it, 99.3% of their offense is back from last year as far as yards gained. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's made much of a difference yet. Yeah, it's still very, very early. Last two possessions, ending in fumbles by Brown and Oaks. And Oaks gets a give to Brown. It's a win around the left side. And a pickup of nine yards. And he caused the last ball on the tackle for us to give. Brown at 6'3", 225. Could play anywhere. He insists running back is where he wants to play. We're going to get a pull here. Pull from the guard and the, and the fullback are going to both come through. This is what Colorado wants to do right now. You're going to bring the big guys around. Good block there. Low, good block there. High back to stay behind him and pick up chunks. So Brown again, breaking the tackle and picking for first. Nice body control. Got hit off the corner. They're bringing pressure almost every snap. Chris kept his feet. He is a big target because he's so tall. But when he secures the ball, keeps his momentum going north. He's a heck of a back. You don't see that already. Don't be surprised, I guess, guys. We know we're going to start to see Daniel Graham, that tight end, on some drag routes soon. I, I would think they would want to keep running the ball and maybe the short pass to the tight end and really try and control this a bit. Oops. 
Great carry. Brown has picked up a Ford of the 35. Let's hear from the studio and Chris Fowler. Well, David, the kickoff classic defense carried the day. Watch Chris Young of Georgia Tech popping Troy Noons of Syracuse. He was shaken up with Wood return. Jackets get the only touchdown from Joe Burns, but a great defensive effort. 13-7 over the Army. Guys. I thought two different occasions Troy Dunes had been knocked out. Oh. He would not come back, and they kept coming back. He sure did, but let me tell you, what a tackle that first hit they showed when he hey. turned up on that option. Hey, those yellow jackets are tough. Where'd you go to school, though? Georgia Tech. Right. Five, seven, and six. Oh, off the pick. Okay, complete to Brandon Drum, the most highly decorated football player out of Alaska. Top recruit in the history of that state, a junior out of Anchorage. We want to get him involved, running and catching. Absolutely right. Last year, between him and Scott uh, Nemeth, the, the fullback, they had six carries between the two of them, and I believe 12 touches. And Coach Barnett said that's going to increase. But, Bill, as we said, sometimes that you say that, it doesn't always happen. But this kid, Drum, looks like a good one. They're going to want to get the ball in his hands. Yeah, they like him as a running back. They'll put him back there in the one back. Everybody in tight as they need to gouge out two. And Brown should have it. Needed just across the 41 and closer to the 42. I think the O-line needs this. The O-line needs to go ahead and just put their paws down on the ground, come up, smack somebody in the mouth. That defense is smaller for Fresno State. They just want to run some people over and build some confidence a little bit. We talked about Jay Sean Sykes. For Colorado, this guy, Maurice Rodriguez, number 44, right here is going to fill. Boom, takes on the fullback, stuffs him, makes the play. That's his sixth tackle already. Bobby Purify, another member of the tailback rotation, in for the first time as the pass is incomplete off drum. That wouldn't matter anyway. Drum was covered by McGill, and there was pressure on Oaks right away. I Guys, I just think they gotta. I think they can keep slamming the ball. You gotta keep running. Let that big old line just pile drive it ahead. Now they're in second and ten. Now they put themselves in a very tough situation. Uh, dare we say they would beat like a drum on that play? Now we won't. If I had the drum, I'd do that. Doo -doo -doo thing. <laughs> I don't have that ability. Hey, you did pretty well. All right. It's verbal rim shot. The play fake on second and ten, and Oaks floating for Hallowell has a strike to the 35. He beats McGill. No flags this time, and it's good for 23 yards. Remember, on the last possession, they had Hallowell for 20, called back on holding, and soon after that, they bumped it away. Bear in mind now, Oaks just got drilled coming out on a naked boot. What do they do? They call the same play. Nobody blocking for him. He knows he's going to get hit. He slips the ball on the deep ball. Very difficult throw, even running to his right. That's hours of practice. He hits the 5'6", 165-pound senior Holloway. Now back to the ground. Brown back in the backfield. That may be as fancy as they need to be at this point. Hours off tackle for a couple. <laughs> like I said, these, these old linemen getting their uh, getting their confidence. Andre Gerard, 65, the guard, is just. And we may get a chance to look at it another time. <laughs> what a pancake play! I just love to see it. End of the first quarter. Gary Barnett trying to win his first opener in his third year with the Buffs. Not going well so far. Probably a battle worth watching. Gerard and Harper up front with preseason All America worthy. Second quarter begins, second and seven, and through the hands of Hollowell. Had him open, just overthrown. You know, the play before, sometimes you watch at home and, and a two-yard play is insignificant, but watch the offensive guard, Gerard, and the defensive tackle, Harper, the two best linemen. There's meaning in every play. Watch Gerard's hand. Look at that. That, my friends, is illegal, Bill. But it's a, you know what? It, it's a nice play. He finishes off. He absolutely pile drives Harper. Not legal to get it up in the face. But you know what? You do what you do. You block him where you have to block him. There's an efficient block for Gerard. Those are blocks you remember, even though it's a two-yard game. How can the helmet stay on? I don't know. But, Bill, that's when the alignment is made. down juggle by Cormier. Some of these passes by Oaks just a hair off. A little late, a little high. 
And fourth down. Nice play, Tyree Sims. The most important thing a defensive back has to do is to backpedal, change directions, and then hit the receiver at the moment the ball arrives. And that was exactly what he did. That's good defense. Had Cormier caught the ball in his hands and cushioned it, he would not have had that problem. He could have hung on. Should have had the ball, shouldn't he? Have? He's We've sure. got a walk-on trying to kick a 50-yard field goal and get Kyle around on the board. Pat Brome. In the college transfer out of Wheat Ridge, Colorado, is wide right. The snap was off. The regular snapper is missing for this game. Neil Hannafin's not going to be able to play. Jake Jones, number 84, threw it on the ground. And that caused a little, just a little hesitation in Brown's step. And that could have caused that missed kick. Monday night countdown. Previews ABC's Monday night football game. The girl is providing up-to-the-minute NFL news, comprehensive analysis, and live interviews. Start your Monday night with Mike Tirico and Tom Jackson. Ed Monday, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Coming up from Mexico City tomorrow evening, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, the American Bowl, Cowboys, and Raiders. And Terry and Fontenot's first carry as a Bulldog. Freshman out of Longdale, California. Maybe the fastest they have ever recruited. He's a former California State 100-meter champion. So we've seen Levi start games, get a couple of series, and now the speedy Fontenot. He's 40 time down around 4-3. That's not bad. <laughs> That's good. That's right. Man. Get you where you want to go. Second and five. It's Davis on the crossing pattern. First down, Fresno State. Up to the 48. Mike, this looks like a fine surgeon at work. David Carr is just picking them apart. He's throwing the ball in holes. The receivers are catching the ball on the dead run, putting it away, making gain after gain. And first down, it was, it's as if a surgeon were at work here. Nice job. That's execution. Eight out of ten, 67 yards. Levi has a clear back. And a late flag after a late hit. Levi down to the 45, but not everybody was done hitting. Yeah, Robbie Robinson. Uh, might be a little frustration already on Colorado. He's should come in late and pop one of the Fresno State players, and they're going to tack that one on. Fresno's just beating them through the air. They're beating them on the ground right now. Dead ball. And they're beating them up for Personal the foul game. on the they're defense. Them back off the 15 ball. yard penalty. First down. Remember, we said that Fresno offensive line is the biggest line since Pat Hill's been there. And they're moving, and Robinson comes up late. I think a little frustration. In the open, we made a big deal out of Jay Sean Sykes' challenge for himself and to the team. We haven't called his name. And there hasn't been a lot of ferocious hitting by any of the defenders on the Colorado team. Well, except <laughs> after, the, after, the, after the whistle. Yeah. <laughs> in that instance, not in a position to afford that. There's no state moving without help. But from the 31, Kyle will keep. And finally, we get to call Jay Sean Sykes' name. Nice open field tackle by Jay Sean. Watching come up. Keep his feet against a pretty good, tough runner. Car's no tailback, but he's a heck of an athlete. Deshaun's got his head on a swivel, looking for blockers. Comes up. Nice base. Head up. Right in the middle. Form tack. Good job. Back to Levi and a quick, hard collision with Drew Walrus, the outside backer. Well, now Walrus on the initial hit. Sykes cleaning up. Now, all of a sudden, Bill, maybe they heard you down there. The linebackers. Last two plays have made a couple of plays for this defense of Colorado. And Tom McMahon, the co-coordinator who coaches the secondary, said, we need our defense to play on its toes this year and not on its heels. But for the entire first quarter, these guys played on their heels. And that is not a good sign for the Colorado defense. It is a right down there. huge play to be as early as we are. Much more so for the Colorado defense, really, than the first goal offense already at 14 nothing. Third and five, and then we're ready, and Berrien gets Barry. Joey Johnson, junior linebacker, unloaded on him. Wow. That 
breaking up the play right there. Andy Ludwig, the uh, offensive coordinator for Fresno, has done a nice job of play calling, but I sure don't like that one, Mike. You're down there with a chance. You've got third and three or all kind of things you can call. It worked before, but out of the same lineup, it looks like college, the same formation. Colorado picked that up, and Johnson just comes in there and tattoos. 42-yarder. That's Perujo's best last year, 43. Grossmont College. A transfer. No good. Wide left. Finally, something to get excited about on the Colorado sideline. Fresno State moves it, and the Buffalo defense finally rising up to keep it 14 0. Coming September 7th, the new ESPN News. There was a time when. ESPN 2's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Walmart. Brand name tires, oil changes, and more at your neighborhood Walmart Tire and Lube Express. 14 nothing Fresno State, although they have only outgained Colorado. 104-83. They've had two pretty short drives for scores. Colorado finally turning it back over to their offense at the 25 and Oaks Loading one incomplete, and again, just inches tall for Derek McCoy. We go down below Jimmy Dykes. Hey, Dave, how important is this game to that Fresno State program? They shelled out over $400,000 in ticket sales to ensure a spot in this Jim Thorpe Classic. This is a team also that yesterday, the remaining 3,500 tickets they still held, they put them on sale at the team hotel yesterday. And in honor of Columbine High School in nearby Denver, any current Colorado student, teacher, or parent of a student could buy a ticket for a 75% discount. Nice gesture by Fresno State. A very important game to Pat Hill. It was a nice gesture. And uh, I think most of those didn't get sold. Brown for no game. Really, Bill, they treated it like a bowl game, didn't they? They treated it exactly like a bowl game, and it, it makes me think of Bobby Bowden and Florida State's program back in the mid-'70s when they would go to Nebraska or Notre Dame. They'd play anybody, and when they began to beat those teams, that's when their program was elevated, and that's the kind of thing that Pat Hill would like to accomplish. It's that other FSU, you know. He says if we want to play, with the, we want to eat with the big boys, we got to beat the big boys at the table. So that's we right. got to take care of them. we got to go play them. Fresno State, one of the toughest teams in the country at home, but they struggled on the road. And it struggled tonight, for Third and ten on the roll. Oates to Brown out of the back. With a big block and enough for the first down. Thirteen yards. And that was no guarantee, Mike. There had to be the blocker, and he would have been well short. And, and I, was, I, I wasn't sure about it at first because it looked like he got ahead of his blockers at the beginning, but then he waited for that block and got the first down. Nice job by Wayne Lucier, number 78, the center, who really hustles. To, he has to go to the left. He gets bounced around. He's a little late getting started, but here he comes. He locates the defender, and he's the guy that switches the first down. Nice job by one of the big guys. Play fake. Once again, they throw across the ground. And a short gain of two. Important for a team like Colorado not to fall much farther behind because their offense is not geared to airing it out quick rallies. And Brown, after the hit, still down. And remember, Harry Barnett already without Portland Johnson so far. He says he could use him in an emergency, but rather not. And Marcus Houston, the prize freshman from a year ago, definitely out tonight with a groin that's bothered him their entire fall camp. So now Brown, who was the only really healthy tailback who had also played well in the fall, suddenly becomes a question, at least for now. New running backs coach, one of the great names in this program's history, Eric Bieniemy. Gary would want to turn his way and suit him up. He's... Running low on tailbacks. Well, as they look over, Chris Brown will break second quarter. 14 nothing. Gets himself together, and this is not. <laughs> that's not a terrible throw, but it's not as good as some he's made. Actually, a pretty nice recovery by Craig to get that ball off the ground and get it off. Mark Mariscal punting. Place kick last year. Brothers through the year. And 
this one will bounce into the Fresno State end zone at 47 yards, but that's twice now he's not been able to keep it out of the end zone, and that's only 27. Well, David Carr, as advertised, Fresno State defense, perhaps 78th year, Folsom Field is the home for Colorado Buffalo football. ESPN2 College Football Primetime and the Jim Thorpe Classic in the second quarter, 7.55 remaining. All Fresno State so far. They start this possession with a nice game by Harris game. Pick up of about nine yards. Colorado has turned it over twice on fumbles, leading to one-yard touchdown runs by Gaines and by the quarterback, Carr. If there was a weakness on this Colorado defense, a lot of people thought it was a defensive line, young outside of Justin Bennett, who's a senior. The other was three down linemen, a little inexperienced, and Fresno taking advantage of that. And he hit the deep ball. That one batted down, intended for Rodney Wright. And Tyler Brayton, it looked like, reaching up. Try the quick pass again, like you said. They haven't seen that long ball. They're going for another quick one. Brayton's not going to get there. He watches the quarterback size. That's what you taught us to be lineman. He saw the quick pass. He gets the view, and he times the pass with his jump. Good read by the young defensive lineman. Junior Pasco Washington product. Puts up third and two. Movement left side of the line and a fumble snap. The car never had a hand on it. Recovered by Gaines. Carr's also an excellent official. He's making the call here. No hesitation. <laughs> he knows what happened. He's sure that it's the Colorado defensive line. We shall see. Defense offsides in the zone at snap. Five yard penalty. Actually, smart by First the center, down. Bill. And I know you were a center. You like when I call him smart. As soon as the D lineman jumped into the to the neutral zone, the center snapped the ball. Watch. Justin Bannon, 97, right closest to the ball, jumps in, and the center snaps it. There you go. Offsides defense. The only problem is, Carr wasn't ready for the snap. You hate to break the quarterback's fingers like that. Wouldn't you know? I'm shocked when you say the center's smart. Well, I mean it really. That's a first. Maybe a last. Maybe a last. <laughs> Enjoy it. That's the games on first down. You can't get over the pile more than a couple. Now, Carr also a video fanatic, so many college players are, and he played this game out on his own uh, video setup. And would you like to know the final score as he played it down? That would be Fresno State 44, Colorado 20. How did he are do? Are we surprised? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear his number. Yeah. <laughs> Five, six hundred or so. Returning captain. He is eight out of twelve. Hopefully short step through the air. Incomplete. Wright was over there, but Phil Jackson even closer. Actually, that to the story takes a, a little twist. When he went to get the game, he went to the store for the game. And as he was going to buy it, he saw somebody playing using Fresno State's offense in a game, using him as quarterback. So he stood there and watched the guy. He said in the first half, the guy had Carr thrown for over 400 yards. He walked up to the guy, did Carr, and Carr said, I wish we, were, we ran that offense. It would work really well. And he bought the game. Somewhat better than reality so far. They have a 13, 67 yards and another flag. We'll see what kind of referee Sykes is this time. He points across the line. At Joe Shy, the right tackle. Well, when it's called dead ball, then uh, Joe Sean is probably right. Start he is. On the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. This was the previous play. Previous play is actually a catch. The officials don't miss many. Rodney Wright gets that foot down, and in college football, one foot touch it. That is a catch, but what a wonderful catch it is. What a great job by the crew down there, and the truck hitting that one. Yes. Way to go, Watch guys. Man. Nice ISO. <laughs> Referee's not going to want to see the replay like that. Mm. Third and 11. Drive the screen over the middle, incomplete. 
really nobody was close that time. Gaines ran a different pattern, it looked like. Well, Carr lost his head right there. That's the first really poor decision he's made tonight. The most important thing a quarterback does is to make quality decisions, and he's done just that until that moment. That could have very easily have ended up in a touchdown the other way. So Simpson to kick on fourth and 11. Billy Simpson, the son of my old teammate. Jason Simpson brings this one down to the 23. Hollowell making the first man miss. And now room. And Simpson, the last ball for Fresno State. They will catch Hollowell. Touchdown, Colorado. 77 yards. Sometimes you don't know where the spark is going to come from, and in the first game of the season, a lot of times it's that special team. Could be the spark Colorado needed. We'll see. Certainly got the joint jumping right now. Colorado second in the country returning punch last year. Haven't lost a thing. Rome adds the extra point. The Bucks are on the board. Roman Hollowell makes things run a little bit smoother right now for Gary Barnett. Offense has been stymied, so they call on the special teams to get back in the game. Craig Oaks is the job of the offense just got a lot easier thanks to Roman Hollowell. A 77-yard punt return touchdown. They just really broke it up the middle, and you'll see guys coming from the both sides from Fresno State. Bad angles coming in here. Bad angles on the tackle, and Hollowell just beats it straight up the field with his speed. And then there's nobody to touch it. you got to take the proper angle when a guy's breaking up the middle, coming from the outside. You have to you have to cut the angle to where he's going to be, not where he is. And Jason Simpson, the punter, is probably Billy Simpson was a long-time safety for the L.A. Rams. They needed Billy on the field as that last defender. <laughs> Rome kicking this one all the way through the end zone. And down we go to Jimmy Dykes. Hey, Dave, uh, John Baxter, the special teams coach for Fresno State, told me yesterday the guy he fears the most for Colorado, Roman Hollowell. He said he's only 5'5 five, five or 5'6. Five, he's quick. The most difficult thing in covering that guy is finding him. He's so small, a lot of times we can't see him, and he just burned him right there. His worst fears were realized. But with all their trouble last year, that is the one thing they did surpassingly well. Second best in the country. And they call on it again here. They cut the lead in half. And now Tom the Bulldogs are just under six minutes to go first half. For the first time, do not have the momentum. He does have all day. And he throws some feet over the middle of another short game, Josh Levi. Question for both of you guys. Where's the deep ball been in this game, especially for Carr against the Colorado secondary that could not stop deep passes last year? Well, two things. The, the coverage deployment, the way Colorado's lining up, dictates that you don't throw the deep ball, and you don't just throw it because you want to throw it. And number two, everything else has been working. When your short stuff works and the running game works, you stay with it. Pass down in second and five, and they'll take that. Corner dips. And Levi will be very close for a first down game at the 30. Tomorrow on ESPN 8 Eastern, the Charlotte Sting taking it to game number three as the WNBA playoff continues. They take on the Liberty in New York. And at 10 the Eastern, 7 Pacific, out west, Sacramento Monarchs traveling the L.A. Sparks. The WNBA conference final doubleheader tomorrow. Carr slow to get up after the last play and very slowly making his way to the sideline. They're going to call a timeout. That way he can stay in the game unless, unless they're going to put somebody else in. They're going to work on the snap. The backup is going to go in. Strickland coming from the left of your screen. It's another corner blitz. Now the Could ball is 10 yards yes. up field. Yes, but when you fake the bootleg, this is a big dispute with the coaches and the rules committee every year. When that quarterback fakes as well as Carr did there and the defender hits him, the defender is usually not called. 
They give you the benefit of them. You teach your quarterback to do a great job of faking, but you understand that means the guy's going to hit him. They call the timeout to Nathan Rake. It takes some snaps over on the sideline. He's going to go in. But they also call the timeout probably in hopes the car could go back. You have to call a timeout, just like you mentioned, Mike. If you don't call the timeout and a player's taken off the field, he has to uh, stay out at least one play. He looks like he's fine. You saw Jeff Brady, the backup last year, who played four games, thinking maybe they can get a redshirt year in for him this year, and Nathan Ray, who redshirted last year, on to replace Carr. I'm going to go out on a limb here, guys, and I'm going to say this is going to be a running play. <laughs> Steve Spurrier was coaching to be a deep ball about it. <laughs> Running play it is. And Levi tripped up. And a gain of only two. The car not acting hurt or dazed or anything at all. And in fact, getting the play and right back into the huddle. Now for Ray, it'll show four seconds as far as playing time now so far for the game. Helps him better. There you go. Both Barry and, and Davis wide to the right side. And they again come after the car with a blitz. Got it off plenty of time by Kay Davis. First down to the 46 yard line. A gain of 13 for Davis. Sophomore wide out in for the injured Charles Smith the first part of the year. He's one of the taller ones at six foot. He makes the catch here, but good job of him shaking two missed tackles by Strickland and Lewis. See, there's Lewis, and there's Strickland. Got to make those plays. Got to break down. Good job of eluding by the receiver. And what the Colorado defense wanted has not happened. They have not quickly forced a three and out and given it right back to their offense. For Hollowell on another punch return. With a pump take and now escorted out of bounds by Walrus. Guess where he was going? That was hitch and go. Yep. We've been we've been talking about the deep ball for about three hours now. <laughs> <laughs> the try hitch and go and Colorado's sitting on it. Somebody please throw it, make us they look good thinking, here. They were thinking the same thing. Nice job with the pump fake and a nice job by car to pull it down and just take the short gain rather than throwing it up for grabs. And he took a gain of three. Three wides and Jack me right. And Davis and Barry. And right with this catch. And carries Michael Lewis, the strong safety, for an extra three, four yards, giving 14 to the 37 and another first down. Mike, this is a crucial possession for both teams. That Colorado defense desperately needed to get out and stop these guys immediately. Fresno needed a drive, and the drive is happening. Back to the precision passing. Nice cut by Wright. Nice catch in traffic. Right, a senior. It's about half last year with an ankle. Levi. Getting, maybe getting one. Justin Bannon, the defensive tackle out of Fair Oaks, California. Defensive co-coordinator, charge the outside linebackers, Vince Okru, who followed Barnett from Northwestern staff. And Tom McMahon, well, we're glad to see him back. Absolutely. Battled lung cancer. One time gave him a 10% chance of survival. And he beat it and back to work. He worked as much as he could last week. And we're going all the treatment that was involved. Second and nine, turning in is Marion, and more yardage after contact. Fresno State receivers get an extra three, four yards regularly after their catches, and this one goes for 11, and again, they move the chains, and now inside three minutes in the first half. Well, you look what, again, that was a, he checked at the line of scrimmage, did Carr, and he's looking how the defense is lined up, and he's seeing DB's lined off, so he knows he has the short slant right here. That's exactly what he's checking to, sees the DB's playing off, Knows he's got some space. Just get the receiver the ball and let him do the work. Another short drop, and that one almost picked off. It was off right. 
and through the hands of Medford Moore. Let's send it to Chris Fowler in the studio. Well, Dave, coming up on the Saturn Halftime Report, we'll show you highlights. Georgia Tech showing a defense worthy of a title contender. Look ahead to Miami Penn State and the other big games next Saturday. And we'll also break down the Big 12 race. The Huskers and the Sooners showing some strong defense in their openers. Rod Gilmore will join me for the Saturn Halftime Report. Strong defense. Neither are very thrilled about their offense. Colorado thinking probably along the same lines right now. They give it to Fontenot, the speedy freshman, coming around to the 16-yard line before he's knocked out there. Andy Ludwig, offensive coordinator for Fresno, made it very clear we want to show our speed. Fonto, Fontenot, one of the fastest guys, got the ball in the sweep. Didn't have to think much, just burned to the sideline. And Donald Strickland out on the grass for Colorado, the junior corner. There's Andy right there. Strickland's down. Looked like he was reaching back and grabbing his hamstring. Don't know if he pulled it a little bit or possibly a cramp. Well, you could believe they'd be cramping up. Yeah. 93 degrees. Yeah, that's deep. warm. You hope it's that. And let me tell you, you cramp up. That comes and bites you, doesn't it, Bill? <laughs> that gets your attention. You hope it's that. And the way they're kind of massaging it, you think that's what it might be. Well, if you're if you're if you're Strickland or the coaching staff, you're just praying that it's a it's a spasm and that it's not a tear, because a torn hamstring yep. is a real bad news. Well, he's up and go. going. Yeah. One of the reasons I had a lot of fat on my body, Bill, it wouldn't cramp. Is that the reason? Sure. And what about the head? 80, still pretty warm. And that Strickland, I guarantee, it's not 80 up here in this booth. No. <laughs> Strickland coming off uh, shoulder surgery. Didn't play at all in the spring. He had three concussions last year. So, one of the Buffaloes, he had to do that way too often in the 2000 season. Good managed a couple of first fumbles and a couple of sacks. So, third and one for the Bulldogs. Two timeouts left, 225 and a half. Flags down as Gaines, if the play goes, has the first. Uh, Fresno State moving all over the place. That's when you outsmart yourself. Yeah. My old coach, Bobby Dodd, one of the all-time great thinking football coaches, said don't use motion in short yardage. Too many ways you can screw it up. That's what happened. Illegal shift on the offense. Not set for a second. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. The rule says when you're moving around, and you got all those guys shifting and changing. Everybody has to be set for a full second before you snap the ball. Good call. Now, a different call required. Third and one to the third and six. They move the change here and they go for the shot to the end zone. You want to learn to take that shot. Second again. Ball moving games back behind him. With three wides. And Farrell oh, cleared in for the R.K. Davis touchdown. 21 yards. All he changed to was the right change. Let me tell you. These guys are good leaders now. Let me tell you, that's a play you see on Sundays, guys. That's, that is a big-time play right there. That's the way you throw and catch. Again, he checks off to this. We'll look at the defensive backs. Are they playing off? If they're playing off, that's when you're going to get your receiver slanted. 40 to 7. And ask for Ruhoff to make it another 14 point Fresno State lead. A stunned crowd in Colson Field. Hollowell's punt return had him back into the game. Fresno State very calmly drives. 80 yards, and it is 21 to 7. Well, he checks at the line again, looking at the D. You see him checking. He sees the DBs are playing off, so he goes with the slant, and I mean, this is precision. Absolutely froze the safety right there. First touchdown for Davis. 21-7 dogs wasn't he backed off and you're absolutely right Sykes has got the wall that guy off on the inside and Carr I'm sure as soon as he took the snap and saw Sykes go back said uh oh and drilled it anyway 
Well, he drilled it when he saw that Sykes wasn't building a wall on that receiver. Sykes baited him, got the throw, and then he wasn't where he was supposed to be. Well, we thought we might see Portland Johnson, but I said in an emergency we would, and he is in there. They get McCoy in the open field after a cross all the way to the 49-yard line. Again, it's 29 for Derek McCoy. Run down by Devon Banks. All three timeouts are there for the Buffs. And now they'll snap it from near midfield. Best thing they do, guys, is crossing routes. Best thing they do. It's the best team, thing a lot of teams do, it seems. It seems you would see more of it. Only work for both teams in this game. Cortos, nobody was out there on Minardi. And the safety, McGill, quickly recovered and knocked him out, stopping the clock 140. And that was a three-deep coverage, and that's a standard throw. Just take it and pop it out there and take your six or seven yards against three-deep. Portland Johnson has been the leading rusher for the Buffaloes, bothered by an ankle. Senior out of St. Louis, now on the field for the first time. Had it been Colorado up 21-7, probably wouldn't be out good. It's over. Whistle that time McGill coming on a safety blitz. I guarantee you that time Oak saw him. <laughs> he located him quickly. It's a ball. False start on the offense. Prior to the snap, somebody else play. Five yards penalty. How sick does that make you as a coach, Bill? I mean, you're, you're in your two-minute drive right now. Well, it makes you even sicker if you're the lineman that flinched. Some offensive lineman moved early up there and spoiled a nice play by the quarterback and the wide receiver. They're back in their own territory with a mark off to the 49. Not much for Gary Barnett to point to on the positive ledger from this first half. Really only the Hollowell 77-yard punt return. And really that was an individual effort. There was not a great bunch of blocking on that. Hoax is 13 out of 22, 134 yards. Well protected going deep this time from the can't make the over the shoulder catch in back. And it's beginning to turn into one of those nights when everything that can happen bad does. Minardi has the surest hands on the team. This is not a hard catch. It's thrown over the correct shoulder, the outside shoulder, on the fade. Minardi should make this catch 100 times out of 100. One of the biggest things that Oaks worked on in the offseason, and the coach said he's got to get a better feel for the deep ball. Let me tell you what, that was a perfect feel by the quarterback. Wide receiver's got to hang on to that. Third and ten. Oh, it's Williams. It's another touch. First down pickup. When in doubt, Oaks will look for Daniel Graham all year. 18 yards. And the clock at 129 as they move the chains up. Graham led all Big 12 tight ends last year. 33 catches. An average of better than 13 per catch. For McCoy expecting him to run it out. He turned that one in. Yeah, and, and Oaks kept himself in the head at, saying, my bad, his fault. Miscommunication, just fortunate it wasn't plucked and taken the other way. Continue to notice as you watch this game that every time a guy in black catches the ball, he gets half two. These guys are not breaking tackles. The secondary and linebackers for Fresno are the biggest difference in this game. There's no receivers. Are breaking tackle. Second and ten. A nice pocket. And another drop by Minardi. Mercy. And he's hearing it. Greg Oaks needs a little help from his friends right here now. But, you know, there's, there's just no excuse for this. He's come into the game with the 18 consecutive games with a catch. And the last two I'm sure he'd love to have back right there. Right in his hands. You couldn't walk out there and place it any better for him. And he knows it. And he's out in Cedric Cormier on third and ten. This percentage tonight. Oh, what's up? Plenty of room. And that's out at the 17. He had Portland Johnson with a key block and 16 yard keeper for Oaks. 
This is good football by the senior, Cortland Johnson, number 27. He sees what's going on. He leads his quarterback, makes a nice block in the open field, knocks his man on the ground. That's Sands who would have made the play. Well, I tell you, Oaks is going to want to re rethink how he puts his shoulder down into something, huh? He got tattooed out of bounds, but he, he wanted to get that first, bo uh, first down and then out of bounds to stop that clock. If you run down there where those white shirts are, you're going to get tattooed. Boy, he's got, yeah, he got, we've learned that. They call their first timeout with a minute 10. And I think you both agree the most impressive drive of the day we've seen from Colorado. But it, it doesn't mean a thing unless they get wishfully seven. Three helps. They really need seven for momentum and for confidence purposes, don't you think? They're doing it the way that Fresno State had been doing it, by short passes. That's what Colorado's been doing with pass to the receivers, even though there's been a couple of drops. Hitting Graham again for the big catches to move the chains. Hasn't been a lot of running with Colorado. That's what Barnett wanted to do this year. He wanted to get some smash mouth football in. Coming up at halftime, we'll have the college game day halftime report presented by Saturn and Chris and Rodney. Look back at the Georgia Tech Syracuse. What's up next week? And an overview of the Big 12. I think uh, Chris Fowler, uh, an alumni of Colorado, I think his monogram checks or his uh, alumni decks have anything to do with the outcome of these games? <laughs> what you ask him tomorrow? Right, You'll be right, right there. <laughs> now from the 17. Thanks for the give. Johnson with the kill. Inside the 10. It's fairly healthy for guys this time with an ankle. Marcus Houston out with the groin pull, and all he can do is root for the guys in his spot. Missed most of last year, but got it back as a medical redshirt. I'll, I'd be looking for the tight end here, guys. It's the security blanket and a go to guy all in one for Oaks. That's going to go in the air. I'd look for the tight end. Lined up on the left side, just inside of the four. Second and one. Over the middle turn and an incomplete intended to McCoy and defended by Sam Nutley. 101, third and one. Nice play by Sam. Though you've been saying it about these DBs the whole game, and that's another reason Oaks hasn't gone long. The DBs for Fresno State have played back, and they're breaking on the ball so well. There's no need for them to come up and jam at the line of scrimmage. Here you see another good break on the ball. He arrives the same time the ball does. Good job with the left hand. The important thing is he kept the right hand off the body to not get the interference. The four receivers ran inside left. Oaks looking the other way. And Minotti has it. Leads for the end zone and got it. having the confidence to go back to him and Minardi, I'm sure, wanting to make up for those two drops. That's a heck of a way to do it. John's real happy about the shot, promise you. Now he holds for Pat Brown's PAT. Rick Jones, the backup, like all that man, and it's blocked and picked up by Maurice Rodriguez from Fresno State. They can go with it. They pick it up and go with Fresno State can. That was the third bad snap by Jake Jones, number 84, who's filling in for Neil Hannafin, the normal snapper. Gary Barnett was extremely concerned about not having his regular snapper. The ball was blocked by Sam Williams, number 40. And again, little tiny mistakes. It cost you games in the final analysis. That's a nice, nice vertical right there, huh? Nice guy by the big hogs. Nice job up front to get penetration so he can get to the line of scrimmage before he goes up. Sam Williams, and they had blocked 27 kicks at Pat Hills five years here. Make that 28. Get With a vertical one. jump like a young Mike Gold. Absolutely. You can slide a whole dollar bill under my feet when I get up, my friend. <laughs> Not a good game to be missing your regular snapper. No, it isn't. This is a thing they specialize in anyway. Yep. 80-yard drive, capped by Minardi. 
Hannafin with a blood clot problem. The reason he is not able to snap for Barnett and where exactly what he feared happens there is 21-13 to school in 56 seconds. I don't know if we're ever going to see a kick return at this altitude tonight. Every kick except the opening kick, which went out of bounds near the goal line, and has sailed beyond the end line. And this one will as well. So with two timeouts, almost a minute to go, Fresno State. Beautiful job by Craig Oaks on touchdown. It's going to be a secondary pressure stunt. There's going to be a blitz from out here. He recognizes it, immediately goes to his hot read. Coach Barnett has said the thing he does best is to recognize secondary pressure and get to the right guy in a hot situation, meaning there is no blocker. Well, Minardi's a big guy, 6'2", 195. He's tall and he's got a little bit of size to him, so he's not going down in that first hit. Something Fresno State has done very well. Good job getting it into the end zone. This is more than enough time to keep time out for Carr. If they want to do anything but run out the clock, and that may be all they have in mind as they give the game. Fresno State in charge twice with leads of 14 points in this first half. Carr as advertised. Mostly with a short control passing game. He's 13 to 20, 131 yards. And a touchdown. He has also kept it for a touchdown with a one yard sneak. Gains the other score on a one yard run. And it's called the second time out now. And it's called by the Buffaloes with 49 seconds. Craig Oaks finally getting his offensive points. The previous score on a 77 yard Roman Hollowell punt return. As well as Fresno's done on offense. Some people have to be wondering, why in the world would they call a timeout and give them another shot? They want to force the punt attempt so they get a block and maybe get more points before the half. That's what Colorado would like to do. Fresno has not shown the ability to score quickly or go down the field, and Colorado's going to dictate by coverage if they don't get a chance here. What they better do, though, is tackle and wrap up, right, Michael? You know, always got a slant or two. Yeah, I would say so. That could go for a long, long way. I think they're going to run it again. I mean, Colorado's only has one more time out. Gaines again. And the whistle is cut at 41 seconds. Uh, getting a little testy down there. Huh? Well, you got a big guys are mixing it up. Those are so sweet. No more timeouts here. Colorado only had one more. They wouldn't have been able to. No, they did call it. They did call their last timeout. Sure did. Let's see if they get them stopped here. It's four down. Have to pump the ball. Well, Fresno State has been tough at home. They have a hard time getting non-conference opponents of this type of stature to play them at home, but they have the third longest winning streak at their stadium right now in the country, 15 straight. What they have needed is the breakthrough road win, 7-19 under Pat Hill. They're going to get plenty of chances. No team is traveling more than Fresno State, almost 21,000 miles for seven road games. And... Uh, They've got Oregon State, followed by a trip to Wisconsin. Long trips anytime you're in the WAC. They were going to play 12 games anyway because they have the trip to Hawaii right. for the extra game. That's a lot of frequent flyer miles. That's what who gets them. That's uh, 13 games. Regular season schedule coming into that. James is going to be real close to the first down, so they may need to stop the clock just for a minute here. 35 seconds. There's no state starting the season early, and it will go all the way through November 23rd, and they hope to uh, a bowl as WAC champions. Oregon State does come to Fresno. That's one of the few teams they've gotten to play them home and home. And then trips to Wisconsin, Tulsa, back here in the Colorado, Hawaii, as we said. They come to Texas to play SMU. So here's the chance for the block. If... Uh, no, they're no they did get the first down. down. They did get the first down. By inch. And that's by car. We'll end the first half. 
hardly anything you could point out that Carr did wrong in that first half. 13 to 20 for 131 through the air. Threw for one, scored one himself, and it's 21-13 for Pat Hill's Bulldog. Back to the studio, Chris Fowler. All right, fellas, thank you. Yeah, Carr's performance doesn't surprise us. The Fresno State's defense probably does. Second line, and I didn't say it this time when Fresno took over, but that's the time you put it up. Let's go down to Jimmy. I can tell you what, when uh, starting center for Colorado, Lucier came off the field, he was greeted by a very upset Gary Barnett. He said, there's no excuse for that. That's going to cost us the ball game if we don't get it corrected. He's right. There you go, Curry. Carr in this direction for the tight end Johnson. Jeremy to the 38 of Colorado on maybe the last play of the third quarter. Bulldogs will have third and about two and a half. Haven't seen this Bulldog offense move the change as of late. Really, the whole third quarter, nothing but three and outs for the Bulldogs, and their lead once 14, now five. We start the fourth, 21-16, Fresno State, three costly turnovers by Colorado. Most games are not won in football. Most games are lost, and here's how you do it. You turn it over and turn it over and turn it over. Colorado in trouble at the end. First two led to Fresno State touchdown. Swing pass games chased by Sykes. He catches them at the 31, but it's the first down, and now here comes the late play. Fresno State in the entire third quarter, only 16 total yards. Colorado only 27, but they have the only points of the period. And uh, Sykes a little slow getting up. Here's the call. Holding on the offense during the run. It'll be marked 10 yards from the end of the run. Now, these are two well-conditioned football teams. And what's going on right now is everybody is tired. And even though it's not blazing hot, it's been plenty hot all night. You've got people cramping up, going for IVs. And when you get a little tired and you haven't been playing at game speed, everything starts to come unglued for the offensive units. And that's what we're seeing. And what happens with the holding is you get a little tired, your feet aren't moving as fast, so you're reaching with your arms a little more because you're not getting your feet there and you're grabbing on. Exactly right. What I do like after two plays. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we couldn't use your own offense. They have not been good converting third downs. So instead of a first and ten, third and six. Car for Davis. They get to him. No broken tackles for a bulldog receiver. All the way to the 28. Yards after first contact. That's the difference in the football game. I cannot say it enough times. The turnovers and the tackling of the two secondaries. The contrast is stark. Too much room, though, on a third and six, don't you think? But, but, but I should say, on the other side with Fresno State, they're giving them, but they're closing so quickly, Colorado's not doing That's that. That's the difference. Closing speed and tackling ability. Unlike last year, Colorado secondary not giving up the deep ball. The car tipping away. That's been enough, and another marker down. Game's getting sloppy now. First down's getting pretty predictable here. Yep. From Nobody, State, nobody has it? to say that. Football. Everybody knows it. False start on the offense. Offensive units are struggling with their concentration. This is where you have to suck it up and make yourself think about your assignments, whether it's hiking the ball, hanging onto the ball, or throwing the right place. Coordinators sit up there and tear their hair out at times like this. I looked at the uh, the Fresno State team at, at in between quarters, and they, they were moving a little slow going from one end of the field to the other, this offensive group. They ought to be the unit used to the heat here in the San Joaquin Valley. Now again, they run games on first and 15 even. They're used to the heat, but they're not accustomed to the speed and the intensity of the football game. There's no way you can simulate it in practice. You have to play yourself into game conditioning, and that is a mental thing as much as physical. That's a V on the back of the helmet, emblematic of uh, their pride in representing the San Joaquin Valley. Not much of a running game tonight, but all. Uh, Second off again. On 
on second and 12. They turn it out, and again, Davis making the first man miss. And this to the 23 yard line. Watch Phil Jackson here, number six, the corner for Colorado, and contrast his style with what you've seen from the guys in the white shirts from Fresno. He ducks his head. Yep. His feet are together rather than with a good wide base. you got to keep your head up, good wide base, get a hold of some cloth, and get him on the ground. Don't try to kill him. So Robbie Robinson finally over. The cleanup duty turned it into third and seven. This an option? Yep. Wow, again, he did not have bounds, and it does not work. As it's led by Michael Lewis to David Carr, even with some option in the package. No. Can I just say this? Right, I'll get it out of the way. I'm sure you're Any going. team that does not run the option for their base offs offense should tear every stinking option page out of their playbook. It's ridiculous to try and do, Bill. Gosh, how do you feel oh, about it? I can't it? stand when teams do that. Why don't you give us your opinion? I'm sorry. It's just, it's, it amazes me. It's nowhere near their offense and look what happens. 43-yarder for Esperuhoff, which was not his best from a year ago, and he's got it. So they've traded field goals in the second half. And the Bulldog lead back to 8, 12 29 to go in Boulder. ESPN's two minute drill CD ROM. Available wherever software is sold. Hey, nice rock. My Jeep Grand Cherokee's taking me to the great outdoors. <laughs> Good idea. You'll never take that thing off road. You should get an Isuzu Axiom. It's designed for the real world. Two suspension modes, 230 horsepower V6, for $1,300 bucks less. Brake lights. <laughs> and it's got America's longest warranty. Thanks. There's some profoundly evil people walking the streets right now. I don't handicap myself. ESPN 2's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Isuzu. Go farther. And by Sports Century. The top 50 and beyond. Weeknights at 8, only on ESPN Classic. Back at Folsom Field, Dave Barnett with Bill Curry, Mike Golick, and Jimmy Dice. Fresno State 24, Colorado 16, the Jim Thorpe Classic. This is Tanger, too deep for Hollowell to return. Coming up in uh, about four minutes or so on ESPN Sports Center, John Anderson and Reese Davis. On the return of Pedro, pitched in Texas tonight. The Bonds home run chase continuing, and a conversation with Andre Agassi. This is moments away on ESPN. Quite honestly, we'd like you to stay here and watch this game. Absolutely. How, yeah. why, why else would we have you here? Absolutely right. It's the finish. So, Mike, you're lukewarm on the option? Uh, I'm, I almost jumped down on the sidelines just to yell at somebody. Try, do right that. Now. I'll do that. I take it try. Too, take me too long to get back out oh. here. Colorado, after running it on first down for very little, Chris Brown tonight has 14 carries, 45 yards. The biggest thing that's going to, I'm sorry, Dave, the biggest thing that's going to have to, and we have a player down again, you wonder if it, we've had a lot of cramping tonight. Again, you hope that's all it is. It's 57, Gabe Oderberg, who's a backup guard. In there for Gerard. See, we've seen Gerard go out, Hage go out, Strickland go out. But if, if Colorado is going to start moving the ball, we've seen how well Fresno is tackling on the short passes. They're going to have to take it downfield a little more, Bill. They're going to have to start doing the routes, 10, 15, 20-yard route, maybe take a shot over the top occasionally. But the defense is tackling so well, they have to get it downfield more. Oh, I think so. We'll see here what happens to... Gabe. Oh, yeah, you can see yeah. his neck gets ricocheted there. He's he's in an awkward position, and somebody inadvertently, nobody did it on purpose, but came across with a, a knee or a thigh pad, and um, can't speculate on what the injury is. You just hope that it's uh, something minor. Take a lot of precautions when it involves the head or the neck, as well they should. 
And Mike, back to what you were talking about, the thinking and the strategy in the game, the stuff that had been working, both defenses have done a nice job of adjusting. And the, 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 the controlled pass didn't help it. Phil used to, I'm sure, yell at his players. Second down and nine. You and I will meet after the game. Oops. No more shotgun. And the center and a strike for McCoy. And a first down to the 40. Gain of 18 for Derek McCoy. Very wise thinking by the coaches for Colorado. Sean Watson, offensive coordinator, coaches the quarterbacks. Don't even fool with the gun anymore. Put him up there under the center so he can be confident and play his game of football. Wasn't that a, wasn't that a down the field pass? By golly, Michael, I think it was. Straight down the middle of the field. A little bit of an in route. Nice throw, nice lead of the receiver. You're not bragging. No. It's tired of being right. It's three of us, doesn't it? They come after him. Good blitz pick up. Graham. To the 48, 12 yards. And you can chalk that one up to Mr. Corton Johnson, number 27. Beautiful blitz pickup. He's got to hit the A gap between the guard and the center and pick up the blitzing linebacker. Otherwise, Oaks never has a chance. Maurice Rodriguez, who's been playing a marvelous game, he's going to nail Oaks, he thinks. No, thank you. Right there, Cortland Johnson does a marvelous job. Go to guy, Mr. Graham. Graham. For the first down. There's your go-to guy. Yep, big tight end. Put it away. Put it away, Daniel. As usual, he gets the first. They do go shotgun high snap. And what was supposed to be quarterback draw loses a couple of yards. I cannot believe they went back to the gun and immediately had another bad snap. Could not execute the play. And now are second and 13. Cannot believe that. You've got to be holding your breath at this point. Well, there's a way to avoid it. Well, you see who's at center now. It's not loose here anymore. It's the man that used to play center last year, I believe. It's uh, Gerard. Mr. Gerard, who played center his first two years here. Yeah. yeah. Loose here. He's now at guard. Even Gerard served at the bat. Once again, picked up. Oaks gets rid of it. Graham somehow hanging on, even though they unload on with Vernon Fox. He's at the 42. Third and short instead of third and a bunch. You know, we, we've been talking about Carr and his arm strength have showed it early in the game, but Oaks right there. He's thrown back across his body down the field to Graham. Fantastic job. He gets some time, but he gets some pressure. It'll be coming from his right, the pressure. Watch him go back across his body. See, I disagree with you, Mike. I don't think he should have thrown the ball, but Graham did a great job of saving his bacon. That could easily have gone the other way. Well, the market, they still need five. Oh, to Portland Johnson. He got a big block. There's a marker down. Johnson to the 32. If it stands it up for a first, a gain of 11. And roughing the passer is going to be tacked on. Jermaine McDermott, number 88. A little bit of a late hit there. Man, if you had to pick an MVP, and if Colorado manages to pull this thing off, you got to look hard at Cortland Johnson. They've done a good job spacing him. They, they thought maybe they could get a quarter out of him. Rubbing the passer on the defense, 15 yards. First down. He hadn't played a whole quarter, but he has contributed every down. Well, you look at this. You know it's a screen as a D lineman. This is that's just stupid. That's a duck. You know it's a screen as a D lineman. You can tell when a screen's coming. Dumb, dumb move. What a nice job by Cortland setting up his blockers and cutting up inside. He knows where the first down marker is, and then you attack on because of the foolish penalty. And that was a cheap shot, by the way. That was a head to the head throw. They yeah, move it up to the 17 yard line. Roman Hollowell in motion. Oh. One of the run had no chance. As Clarence Denning had hold up. Well, now Michael Victor Rogers, number 71, is supposed to have not given up a sack in about a millennium. Yeah. He just gave up one. He just flat got beat. Oaks wanted to go to the outside quickly to drum the fullback. He got taken away, so he had to pull it down and look somewhere else. And it gave Denning a chance to get the sack. 
Coming up next, day six of the X Games here on ESPN2. 8, 38, and counting. Four quarter in Boulder. Oh, it's a little lower. That might have gone for much bigger. Ooh, Ooh, poor Mir. Yes. He'll take it on a knee. Oh, he wanted to make the catch and secure it. If that ball is up, he's going to walk in the end zone with it. Gary's wondering what else can happen. <laughs> I know the feeling. His men are fighting them. Both these teams are playing really hard. Concentration has not been the greatest, but the effort certainly has been there. Down eight, third, and nine. And at the eight-minute mark for Colorado, you can't be sure how many more chances you're going to get. Stacy Blitz is picked up. Oh, touchdown to the Marty in his second of the night. And just as Carr did in the first half, great job of reading and hitting a wide open receiver for a touchdown here by Greg Oates. How do you get one of those uh, papal blessings? Well, I tell you what, when Artie was in Rome, he actually got the papal blessing, and by golly, it's paying off. Now, do you go for two here? I got to believe you go for two, try and tie the baby up. What in the world does one get you? One doesn't get you. One gets you one. Two gets you a tie. Well, Oaks and company will go for two. They've got the ball placed where they want it on the left hash. This will be a full sprint right with a throw in the flat, I'm guessing. That's Minardi's side, and now Hollowell's as well. Oh, let's it go. And it's too tall, incomplete. The intended for Hollowell, still a two point Fresno State lead. But Colorado with the strike from Oaks to Minardi. To make it 24, 22, 7, 51 remain. Win any occasion, no matter the size. Fresno State's led all the way by as many as 14 points, but Colorado nudges as close as they've been since we got started. 24, 22, 7, 51 remain. The kick by Brome finally will be returned from the three. Bryce McGill out to the 30. And the Fresno State offense, which has had big trouble moving the ball in the second half, will go back to work. And it's a combination of things. I don't think they've been in their normal offense, and the Colorado defense has done a fantastic job. Be very interesting now. Can Fresno State turn back into that ball control offense they were in the first half? Or are they going to run it up the gut on first down again? Second half, 43 total yards and one first down. It's Minardi's second touchdown. All last year he had two touchdown catches. The last one gave them a chance to beat Nebraska with 47 seconds left. Didn't turn out that way. Carr steps up and misses game. Well, the play broke down, and Carr talked to us at length about the fact that he knew exactly where his drop-offs were if the play broke down. He knew where he was supposed to go. The back was out there, could have picked up five or six yards, and he couldn't connect. Just that fine edge of focus that's been lost since the first half. Lots of second and third and long this half for the Bulldogs. And they run game. Not forward. An extra yard or two to the 35 by Sykes. And that's unofficially the seventh tackle we have for Jay Sean. He hasn't made big noise, but he's sideline to sideline. He's doing his thing. He's starting from a three point stance now. They're moving him around. Nice angle of pursuit and a good hit. All America has a sophomore. Andrew Hall Thompson is a junior. And Valves to return to form this year. Here's third and seventh. Four will be on the pattern for Tom. They cross Barry in over the middle, and he's going to be just short of the first. Some of the best reactions we've seen all night by Buffalo tacklers, and he'll miss it by a couple of feet. Fresno mixed it up so well in the beginning of the game, guys, and now lately they've run the, the plays are pretty 
seemed pretty apparent to the Colorado defense. They're not being fooled by anything. There hasn't been a lot of different types of plays to keep the Colorado defense on their heels. And Bill, as you said before, they're playing on their toes now instead of their heels like they do. They're back on their toes and they're dictating. And they're taking away the things that have hurt them. Has this second half been protecting the lead instead of trying to add to it? Fresno State's offense. I think it's a matter of a quarterback who got just a little bit rattled because they were able to get to him with their strategy. They made him think more than he wanted to, and he hasn't been as sharp throwing the ball. They only have ten guys out there, so they're going to let the uh, play clock run down and take the penalty and then get all square. Oh, man. Coach Hill will have a discussion with the special teams coaches about having 11 on the field. Well, the, dif the difference there is where Hollowell is. If it is still there. Game. On the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. If it would have stayed there, there would have been a possibility of getting the punt to the 10-yard line or inside. Well, Hollowell, you're taught to let it go. Now with that five yards, make, you'll catch it outside the 10-yard line and be able to return it. That gives uh, Simpson 65 yards to work with. But Hollowell will win the work with as well. He's going to the 25. And the Buffaloes play the turn all the way. Another big kick by Jason Simpson. Well, never mind. 65 yarder, to be exact. <laughs> Jason didn't listen to you. He sure didn't. <laughs> 542 to go with the Buffaloes take over. They are down just two. Hey, welcome back to Boulder. Fresno hanging on to a 24-22 lead. I love what Pat Hill told us earlier this week. He never gives his kids an excuse to lose. He won't talk about playing on the road. He won't talk about officiating. He won't talk about the elevation. They're playing at 5,300 feet tonight. That could be a factor if this one winds down. Boulder Johnson has become a factor, too. He's in a foot race with Bryce McGill, who finally catches him from behind inside the 30. 52 yards for man we weren't sure we'd see tonight. And he's limping as he goes off the field. There's a warrior right there. Nobody's got to come in. Chris Brown, the starter, went out earlier. Cortland Johnson comes into play, knowing they can't get too much out of him, and he just keeps on going. He's like the ever ready bunny. He's just a little check through here with a double cross. A defender falls down, and now he takes off, and this time we do see a missed tackle. And if Bryce McGill didn't have such good speed, this thing would have gone all the way. And if Cortland had been full speed, he would have had an impact on every snap. You know, that's got to be a flag, and it will be. Every handkerchief in everybody's pocket came out. Mark Daly grabbing pretty good hold of John Minardi over the middle. Looks like those Buddhist prayer flags flapping in the breeze coming from everywhere. <laughs> Pass interference on the defense. Automatic first down at the spot of the foul. Well, do we think Minardi has made up for the two drops he, earlier? No. Two Minardi touchdown receptions. He should never drop a ball, but they're not going to. Now they're getting sloppy on defense. That's very unlike Daly, who played a solid game. That was just a foolish mistake. Next game, after us. We're near the five minute mark. First and ten by the Rondo, the 25 of Fresno State. And Oaks can keep it for big yardage. Inside the 10, first and goal. And you just saw the difference in a freshman and a sophomore. <laughs> Last year he would have planted that foot and run into somebody. This time he wisely went out of bounds. Way to go, Craig. Protection is good. This is a guy you must contain, meaning the outside rusher must go up the field. This time it was Harper's responsibility, and the big man, Allen, gets beat. He's, he's grinding down a little bit too, Michael. Looking at a quote we have from Dan Brown, the defensive coordinator, told us, must contain Oaks, likes to get on the move. Well, he's right. He does, and they didn't contain. And now first and goal from the nine, Colorado. Working from the four. And he gets straight up the middle for Johnson to the five. For a little of four, and Johnson has gone a long way tonight. This guy's a war daddy. I mean, you just he's the kind of leader. He's the kind of senior. He comes into a difficult situation like this. He's nicked up. 
He just keeps plugging. You get him out of there and rest that thing. Sometimes an ankle is a funny thing. You rest it a few minutes and you go get another couple of plays without re injuring it. Colorado playing catch up all night. Well, they got problems here. There's eight seconds. They're just getting to the line. They may have to burn one here if they can get it off. Yep. Yep. One second on the play clock. They call their first timeout. Bad mistake. Bad mistake. You can't give those timeouts away in a game like this. Well, a Colorado team off a three and eight disappointment last year, trying to with it win its first opener out of three for Gary Barnett. Fresno State seven and nineteen on the road under Hill and trying for a signature win on the road. All you ever want is more, more, more. Second and goal, five yard line. It gives the Browns to the three. And from there, third and goal. Keep in mind, the kicking situation for Colorado has been a matter of concern all offseason. They're going to walk on tonight, Brome. They thought they'd have Jeremy Flores, a senior who academically has a high enough grade point, but to make a very long, complicated story short, did not get clearance from one teacher to turn in three papers in one week. He only accepted two papers. He was not cleared, and Brawl may decide this game, not Floyd. On third and goal, Oaks on the roll. To the end zone, intercepted. He threw it right into coverage for Fresno State, and it is picked off. Devon Banks. As soon as he threw it, he knew it. He had Drum going out to the corner of the end zone, the near corner of the end zone. I thought he was going to go to him right away. He held off, felt he was covered. He tried to hit the next crossing receiver at the next depth and threw it right to the defender. Here's what happens to a quarterback. Craig Oaks knows how to make his reads here, but there's a defender coming from inside out and one from outside in. He focuses on one, does not even see the other, and makes the fatal throw. Interception. There's no state offense. They're able to move it at all in the second half. Most first downs have been gives to Gaines. Yard of maybe. They cannot sit on this lead. And that, that's what they've been doing. And again, credit to Colorado on their defense. But there's 3.25 to go. Colorado just spends another timeout, though. So now they only have one left as they're trying to stop the clock from moving. Well, I'm going to ask you, would you call an option? Oh. <laughs> You just want to see my blood boil, don't you? <laughs> but look at him. Look at his face. He's getting red again. <laughs> Could you imagine if they do it and go big with it? I wish. Oh, that'd be so beautiful. One of the one of the keys to, to the great teams, whether it be a college or the NFL, I go to the 49ers when they were winning their Super Bowl. When they would get up in games, their offense never changed. Short passes, long passes, slants, mix in the running game. They kept going their offense, and they kept moving the chains. The teams you see change their offensive philosophy, and again, give some credit to the Colorado team for uh, the play on defense. But this is... If Colorado is to lose, you can certainly look at these three fumbles as being the cause of it. Those two both led to touchdowns. Harper ended that drive, and now this may, may in Colorado's head. Fresno State has done nothing this half to make me believe Colorado is not going to get another shot with the ball. One more timeout for the Bucs, second and nine for the Bulldogs. They're coming at the car. He will hang one deep and overthrown, even with a nice full layout. Rodney Wright unable to get there. Third and nine, and that stops the clock at 321. Yeah, but Mike's right. They can't just hammer it in there. They haven't been able to do it all night, so there's no reason they're going to do it now. And this is a good call. It's just a misconnection. The guy had a step, could have caught the ball. They'd have a nice first down on the sideline or more had he caught it on the dead run. Now they got a real tough situation. So does Colorado come after him? I think not. I think he dropped into coverage less than three. 
Running out of time, losing the play clock. Nope, didn't get it off. That one official racing in and trying to get his flag out of his pocket, so they will notice that the play clock expired. Now, isn't this interesting? Because Colorado's celebrating the fact that they got the drive stopped, but there's yeah. going to be another play in the drive from five yards the farther back. On the offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. And delay a flag on that official. Yeah, well, he was running in. He couldn't get it out of his pocket. He was blowing his whistle, waving his arms, but he couldn't get the flag out. Well, he needs to do some of those push-aways from the table and get a little more room in that back pocket. Why? He couldn't get his flag out. It was uh, crowded back there. Uh, <laughs> you should understand. Uh, Fresno. This quarter alone, six penalties, 43 yards. Trying to get the clock set. Now the crowd can help their team here. This is part of football, and the players are trying to get them to do it, make it almost impossible to audibleize in this stadium. Now this is not... The noise level here is nothing like an SEC noise, but they can get it up loud enough to, to help their team. That's what the guys are trying to get them to do. A little more pressure on Carr. Now they're driving at 322. Third and 14. Delivers complete first down. Mark Hay Davis has made big catches all night and none bigger than this one. 15 yards. That is a you need 13, you run your route at 15, and you sit. And it also gives you the ability if you have come back for the ball, you're still past the first down marker. Phenomenal half roll, guns the ball. There's your receiver running the discipline route. Right at the right at the uh, yard markers. You can thank Mr. Andy Ludwig, offensive coordinator. That is big league football in the club. Eight catches, 94 yards, a touchdown for Davis. That is coming out nice. They have not missed Carl Smith. And the clock now under three minutes. I believe that's the last time out for Colorado. Well, all kinds of things are out there for the Bulldogs right now. They can just take care of this last 253. They've never beaten a Big 12 team. It's been a long time since they've won on a national stage like this. Like most men. Against Colorado, 0 for 4. And on this kick, Pocono, ridden out of bounds. Here comes another late flag. After they've gotten the clock stop. At 2.48. Are they going to get Sykes for a face mask here? I mean, the, the runner did a great job of trying to stay in bounds. And Sykes dragged him out of bounds, I believe. Fontenot is an inexperienced player, but he showed a lot of heady presence there to try to get on the ground. Listen to this. Personal foul. Face mask on the oh, defense. wow. Grabbed the helmet opening. 15-yard penalty. First down. Major face mask. Look at the cutback. Smart play by the youngster. Very smart, and that's what evoked this situation. Jay Sean just grabbing anything he can get a hold yep. of, and that's a foul. You can't grab the headgear and jerk the head in that fashion, and it's a 15-yarder, and that is so huge that there are no words. 248, still time for the Colorado defense. But now out of timeout. Four turnovers and untimely penalties like that, and it may prove to be their undoing. The Fresno now the clock can only run. The Fresno cannot run the clock out without making the first down here. They must make a first down. And just think now, you look at this score, and you think about the fact that they lost their long snapper, Colorado, Neil Hannafin. Jake Jones came in, had a poor snap. They missed an extra point. It was blocked. Otherwise, the score would be tied right now. Little bitty things in the special teams almost always decide early games. Much like last year when Colorado lost six of their eight by eight points or less. Any chances in close games? Never quite figured out the magic formula. So games will get the clock under two minutes. 
Buffalo's helpless to stop it until they snap it on third down. Next game, day six, will be next. You guys can see me do the vert on the pipe, riding the pipe on the thing with the vert stuff. That would give almost anything to see that. Next week. All right? All right. Skateboard. I want you to do that in one of those uh, Speedo swimsuits. <laughs> oh, that's thick. Third and seven. Buffalo's coming after Carr. He gets rid of it, but out of bounds. And they do force one more Fresno State punt with a minute 23. Bill, here's a question. You kick it through the end zone or kick it out of bounds and not let Mr. Hollowell touch the ball? See who that is right down there, yeah. number five? Yeah. I kick it into the north stand. Yep, I agree with Top, you. As far from him as I can get it. I don't give him a chance to catch it. I don't care if he catches it. He might catch it at the three-yard line and run at 97. We have a 77, a 32. I Simpson can, has averaged hey, almost 51 yards per kick, but it really hasn't gotten him much. I keep Roman out of the game. The guy can kick to the coffin corner, do that. They did it again, they ran out of all, oh, and they are lucky they ran out Look of all. Look at that tank that, that gold count. That was going to be about a five-yard shank. And I the said, play clock. Play right. I said, said if he can can kick it to the cost. This is the five second time, guys. Minutes. Remember the last time the clock just ran out. They threw the little hitch. Colorado made the play. It would have been fourth down. Here, the play clock runs out. The kid shanks it, but now they get a chance to punt it again. What would you say the first half? Sometimes you just figure not supposed to be here tonight. Well, you don't figure that, but you, you can't help wondering what else can happen. Um, you know, uh, Murphy's Law, everybody knows what Murphy's Law is. Well, old Boyle's postulate says that Murphy's Law is optimistic. <laughs> and the Colorado's having one of those nights tonight. Whatever can go wrong, really has. Better not try and shank it again. Oh, uh, I think you're going to let him boom it. I hope so. Setting up return all the way. This one will angle. All the well backed up. Has to return it from his own goal line. No, don't do that. There's a case of a fine player trying to take the game into his own hands and catch a punt at the goal line and become the hero. And instead, he forces his offense to have a 95-yard drive with a minute and 12 on the clock. All right, I'm going to say it again, guys. Shut up and hit somebody. David Adamo, following orders. I love it when you shut up and they hit somebody. <laughs> Boy, I mean, Bill, when you're watching film off Colorado loses this one, are you blaming Hollowell for taking that punt and, and trying to do something with it? Well, he's part of it. I mean, no, he's just a small part. You lose as a team. Yeah, everybody. I don't everybody mind figures. I don't mind him trying to, to make that play. Oh, well over the 300 yard mark. And he starts with a short toss to Hollowell. Crowd wondering, what are you doing? He got no timeouts. Now down to a minute. And he didn't get out of bounds. And again, this one not designed to get out of bounds. And the clock will continue to roll after the catch by McCoy on the 51 second. Well, Dave, in fairness, the coverage does not allow them to throw the outfit. They've got hard corners up there. You can't throw a pass here except a post corner to try to get out of bounds. It might be a good idea to try that. And we have the shotgun going again. Lucier's back at center, I believe. Shotgun has proven disastrous. This one gets out for Muir at the 25. If you're throwing out, that's that all you get. So, I mean, they're playing hard corners that are backing off and letting you have the five and six yard out, knowing you're going to go out of bounds. And if you throw four or five of those, the game will be over and they can all pack up. I was going to say, eventually they're going to have to take this one downfield. They, they, they can't run these for the next 48 seconds. They'll be at the 50 yard line. I'm going to figure at least 55 yards away from field goal position for a walk on chance for a pass. Three plays, three plays. He's this is for Minardi and overthrow. Sorry, Dave, I got excited there. 
Good reason. That was a free shot. It was a smart play, though. He knew it was offside. Offside, then the neutral zone at snap on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Justin Johnson getting a little worked up, not watching the football. Every one of those little things just gives Colorado a little bit more breathing room. John Watson, offensive coordinator for Colorado. Referee just said put it at 41, and that wasn't a popular move for the fans. Well, that's at least a play. Yep. Might be sure Two plays they can't get. Henry Barnett remarkably calm on that. All things considered. Second and short. Oh. That's the... 28 watches it get down to 32, 31, 30 seconds. Trying to get everybody lined up again. On a third and now two. Two problems. The clock and they still need a first down somewhere here. That they get. McCoy and they'll have to move the change at 17 seconds. And Dave, another sure tackle by Sam. They got to waste one here, don't you think? Get everybody get regrouped. You're not going to get four shots for 17 seconds. So there's one, and now they can harder. And now you got to get it upfield. I mean, you got to realistically get at least, at least the 35-yard line. That'd be a 52-yarder for your walk on. And your plays now, your plays have to be first downs. They can't be. They either have to be out of bounds if it's not a first down or first downs, because that's the only way you're getting the clock stopped. Fresno State's going to call their first time out here. And you get everybody over defensively. Well, there's a whole array of plays that work in these situations if you can execute them. They're deep dig patterns, deep stops in the deep curls and post corners. Those are the kinds of things you get from the sophisticated passing offenses in this situation. And that's how folks like the University of Miami of Florida and the University of Florida and FSU are able to go down the field and beat you with very much, very little time. Well, for Colorado, they've got Colorado State up next, and the Rams have had the upper hand in that rivalry the last few years. We got a big 12 play with Kansas, a trip to Kansas State. A&M, Texas, those three all in a row to begin the month of October. Had them up seven bowl teams from last year. And most years, if you're in the Big 12, you're going to play at least six bowls. Absolutely. Regardless of your non-conference. Saw Oaks' stats up there, too. He's had himself a whale of a night. I'm sure he'd like that one back to two in the end. Though. That interception, though. All the turnovers in big. That right now would be the biggest. 15 seconds. Steps up, and here's a deep heave. Four meters out within a couple of feet. But covered pretty closely all the way up by Devon Banks, and now they're down to nine seconds. Well, if you're going long, I don't. can you get two more in? If you're going long, you may take the nine. Anybody find Cordell Stewart and Michael Westbrook? So they've been <laughs> spotted locally. <laughs> They ran that play on their big uh, jumbotron before the game, the Miracle of Michigan, 1994. And another one called on here. Do they have one more in it? Oops, over the middle is Minardi, and he can hold it with five seconds. And if he does, they at least have to move the chains. Wow, wow, he's right. That'll put him at about the 42-yard line. He, if he had hung on and kept his feet, he could have gotten out of bounds. Over There was nobody over on that side of the field. He could have gotten down to around the 30-yard line, and they'd have had a shot at the field goal to win the football game. That's yeah. what have that would have been close. There was about five seconds when he caught it. That would have been, to see him get out of bounds, that would have been a heck of a sprint. That would have been something. 
The last gas. Barring a defensive penalty. They're going to make Oak scramble. Here's the heave. Minardi down there, and it is batted around and intercepted, and Fresno State has the big road win they've been looking for. The Bulldogs do it at Colorado. 24 to 22. 